Boss, bitch, you know, for sure. You're not listening to the mind of an Terry Smooth. I am the Royal Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And this short video right here is going to be about how theologians who utilize apologetics are 21st century demons. <laughs> not for real, though. But for real, <laughs> no pun intended. All puns intended. But how theologians misuse the genetic fallacy. And when they use it, they actually debunk themselves. In a matter of trying to utilize something for the sake of creating stalemate arguments. Because the argument can only defend someone who is just as dumb as them. Just with the opposing worldview. And when we talk about opposing worldviews. That's why you have theists and atheists. Atheists is a specific version of theism. This is why they're into it. To try to debunk it in some way, shape, or form. So they're both wrong. And they both lack equilibrium. So when you understand two polar shifts. You're not arguing for or against something and you're actually able to see the clear voyance and what's actually being conveyed within the message and the literature and the language and the linguistics now check it out when we start to talk about the genetic fallacy this is basically when you take a source and totally throw out or disregard anything else based on the information you have obtained from that source so that's the genetic fallacy right this is what y'all heard biblically tried to utilize in my live stream and things of that nature as if no one are aware of these old ass arguments in the first place that jesuits create just to see us argue amongst their intellectual properties now here's the thing for the most part they're going to try to use this argument within the context of saying how can you prove there is no god and then if you say something like well how can you, because it'd be like a confirmation bias to a certain degree, or not a confirmation bias, but a, um, um, a category error. If you was to say, well, how can you prove Mickey Mouse didn't always exist? But here's how you use this without it being a category error and things of that nature, right? Because we're talking about the context of did a character or an idea was or actually existed before someone wrote it down within a source. And just because the source can totally be wrong, don't necessarily mean what the source and information is pointing to don't exist. So for the most part, this is for y'all not to make that mistake if you was to bring up Mickey Mouse. But for the most part, here's the thing. What you would do is you agree, you will agree with this context. You'll be like, okay, I can agree that I can't disprove your God and things of that nature due to the fact of me pulling out a source or just disproving the source that you have and things of that nature. So what you would say is, yeah, I agree with that because I won't be able to prove that a person didn't have Mega Man or Mickey Mouse in their head before they actually wrote it down. Now, once you give them that, you get to move along to premise two. Now, once you move along to premise two, now they have to use this actual context you know what I'm saying? Whether if it's going to be a global theist or a local theist. You know what I'm saying? Because a global theist is someone who's going to try to uh, argue for all gods and things of that nature due to the fact of them being stupid because they have to utilize 21st century science for them to sound right. And we know, for the most part, Lucifer ain't nothing but universe, speculative, operative, science, religion. It's the same thing. But for the most part, here's the thing. Now we're going to start to get into detail so we can start to make it more local and a specific god. Because a specific God has certain traits and those traits have to relate with whatever you're getting ready to convey to say anyone else is is having genetic fallacy by disregarding your source. So it's like arguing something within definite arguing something in existence with definition, but with definitions, but making that the argument so you don't actually have to prove the definition, the word that's actually pointing to something that the word ain't 
anyway. You know what I'm saying? People don't even understand what these things are pointing to. Like, their God is pointing to the mind and the body. They don't understand that. So they come up with their own allegory to argue against other people who's already arguing like atheists. They're arguing within the context as if God... Um, are, they already believe they presuppositions to disprove it. And therefore, this is what makes all of them wrong. But now you will ask the individual this, right? All right, yeah, you're right. I won't be able to prove that Mickey Mouse didn't exist before somebody wrote it down. Okay, let's move along to premise two now. Okay, now we got to prove. Now you got to prove to me that the source is actually correct. It stand corrected by actually proving everyone had the idea of God all right, within this context, you won't be committing genetic fallacy. So keep that in mind. Now, what you ask the individual is, can you prove to me that all humans was aware of God before it was written down by another individual based upon their imagination on coming up with an idea of how the world was created or the broad philosophical points of views of the world and things of that nature? You have to show them, can you prove to me that, that people know about God before they was indoctrinated by it and things of that nature. And here's the thing. They're not going to be able to prove. They're not going to be able to pull out no proof. Now, this one you throw where you're not motherfucking uh, doing category error anymore. But you could throw in something from a different category to make an allegory to show the theologian their mistake. Now you could throw in Mickey Mouse. Because you could say this. All right. No one knew about Mickey Mouse. But Mickey Mouse could have always existed. And that person who owned... Uh, Mickey Mouse intellectual property head. See what I'm saying? So here's the thing. How did you know about Mickey Mouse? Because Mickey Mouse wasn't in your head. So this is going to prove that it comes from specific authors within their imagination. And since you proved this, right, that the only reason you know about Mickey Mouse is based upon who created Mickey Mouse and you had to get indoctrinated by their creativity first for you to be aware of it and you didn't have no concept of Mickey Mouse first at the age of three, then this debunks what they're saying and this is how you reverse the whole concept of genetic fallacy because basically what you showed them is based on their source, which came way later down the line after the fact and not even an original source because we, you're killing two birds with one stone. They can't pull out no proof of all of us being aware of Mickey Mouse or God before getting indoctrinated. And you have to utilize Mickey Mouse to make an imaginary, magical thinking religious person make sense out of things because they're so lost in their head already and try to use Western Hemisphere logic to try to make sense out of it. So this makes them retarded. But at the same time, you kill two birds with one stone. You show them that. That they're clinging on to a source and that's what's making them have a bias and disregard all other sources. And they can't prove that it's not they're not believing in one false bearing source, because for the most part, they know that before a person made before we all knew about Mickey Mouse or God, you had to get indoctrinated by it in some way, shape or form. So you kill two birds with one stone and things of that nature. No, no. Not only do we not all know about their indoctrinated God when we are born and things of that nature. They actually are committing genetic fallacy because the source that they get after the fact, once a person is already born and in a body trying to come up with their broad philosophical points of views of looking at the world and shit like that. For the most part, you take their source of information and disregard all other sources based upon your ability to argue something in existence with definition by using their source. So this is how you debunk or show a theologian utilizing apologetics that's a 21st century demon that they're misusing the, the genetic fallacy and every time they try to use that as an argument, they actually debunk themselves. Flight boss, bitch, you know, for sure. <laughs>